congrats. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's crazy. They all go down to the locker room, and then when I go down there, they want to talk to me. You want to talk to me, you should come up here. Just like you guys. Uh, joining us from UConn, head coach Gino Oriema, <laughs> student <laughs> athletes Paige Beckers and Ashlyn Shade. <coughs> the format will be as follows. Opening statement from coach. We'll then move to questions for the student athletes, <coughs> followed by questions for coach. Please wait for the microphone. State your name and affiliation before your question. Also, please Ooh. silence your cell phones. And any recording of this press conference is prohibited. I would be remiss if I didn't wish Coach a happy birthday. Mm. Coach, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, you know, from a coach's perspective, um, it's been like this from the very, very first NCAA tournament ever that we played in. You can just uh, wait. <laughs> the leading up to the game is excruciating because all the things that run through your head about, um, you know, do we do we do a good job scouting these guys? Do we do a good job? We don't know enough about them, you know. La 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 la. We're going to take them like there's so many things that go through your head, and I don't care whether it's this year you're a three seed and you're undefeated in 1995 when we're getting ready to play Maine in the first round, you know, and you're scared to death that you know, something, something's going to happen. So uh, I'm thrilled that this one's out of the way and it's over with. Uh, obviously, these two and Aliyah were just magnificent, uh, and that's what you need. You know, we talked a lot about it before, um, <clears throat> I think, uh, yesterday. We said if, uh, if Ash makes a couple threes tomorrow, if Nika makes a couple maybe, and um, – then we're going to be fine. If those guys have trouble making shots, then it's going to be a long day for us. And obviously, you know, these two did what they're good at, and Aaliyah did what she's good at. And if we can keep that up, then we're going to be okay. Questions for the student athletes? Right here on the left, fourth row, Lori. Lori Riley, Hartford Current. Um, Ashlyn, can you just talk a little bit about playing in your first tournament game and was everything just going right for you tonight? Um, it was definitely really exciting. I had a lot of like nerves and like this anxious feeling before the game, like when I went to bed, when I woke up. Um, but no, to step out on the court and go into the starting lineup to hear like how loud our crowd was, like I just felt like like it was a dream. Like it was such a surreal moment uh, to be out there and it was just really exciting. Question up front from Pat. Paige, can you just talk about winning this game on your coach's birthday? I assume that was a big emphasis for you guys not to let one go on, on, on his birthday and, and what it means and what he means to you guys. Yeah, I'm, it's a lot better feeling when you win it, um, especially on a special day for him. We wanted it to be a special day. Um, I know if we lost, it wouldn't no longer be a special day. So to get this win, um, especially on his day, um, it's really huge. But to continue to keep, keep advancing in the tournament, um, and coach is everything for all of us. Um, he's like our grandpa. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, it's just, I've learned so much under him. We've all learned so much under him, but it's not just stuff on the basketball court. It's stuff as human beings. Um, we know he has our back, even though some days it might not feel like it, um, but he'll have our back for anything, anything we need in life. He'll always be there. Um, and it's just a real, mo uh, sometimes it's like, tough love relationship, especially with me. Um, but just I cherish our relationship so much, and I know I can count on him for whenever it's whenever I want to go chat, go to his office, um, just literally talk about nothing, and it'll be a great time. Um, but we're super grateful to everyone who commit, commits here, comes to play for him. So super grateful, and happy birthday, Grandpa. Go to Griffin, fourth row on the left. Griffin Della Pena, Newhouse Sports at Syracuse. Page, what was it like for you to be back on the floor in this March Madness setting? Super exciting. Um, along with what Ash was saying, just a lot of like nerves, a lot of like anxious, ready to go. Um, we haven't played for about two weeks, so just ready to get the games rolling um, and definitely during the most important part of the season. Um, just excited to be back out there on the court with my teammates. Second row on the right, Emily. 
Emily Adams, Hartford Current. Um, Ashlyn, you know, when you had that first steal and score in the and one, we saw the reaction from you and from the team. I mean, just what was that moment like, and when did you feel like you really sort of settled into to this game today? Um, definitely after that play, I felt like I was settled in. Um, I was just going to let the game come to me. Like, I wasn't going to, like, overthink it, um, which I typically do sometimes. But, um, no, today, I was like, after that play, I felt like I was finally ready to go. Um, it was just, like, exciting to just uh, – to score on like that, like that being like my first bucket of the game, uh, really gets you involved. So it was exciting. Third row on the right, Maggie. Maggie Benoni, PP Insider. I'm Paige Carr on that same note. What was it like to see Ashlyn just so much rise up, especially in that third quarter in her first tournament game? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, it's what she and the other freshmen have been doing the entire season. So to come out w in the huge stakes game, March Madness game, um, where it's win or go home and perform like that on your first time on the stage is, is really huge, especially getting confidence in, w in what you want to continue to do the rest of the way. Um, so her being aggressive, we need it. Um, her looking for a shot, we need it. Um, so for her to do it and, and come out with as much confidence as she did tonight was huge. We'll go to on the left front row, Vicki. Vicki Fulkerson from the New London Day. Ashlyn, you talked about this a little coming into the tournament. I think yesterday, maybe. What was uh, uh, March Madness like growing up in Indiana? Like, what what is this tournament like to you? Like, pa Paige has talked about like watching it since she was a little kid. Like, I'm sure you did also. Oh yeah, it's huge in Indiana. Um, since we're such like a basketball state, um, especially like how like my family embraces it so much. Like, I've grown up watching March Madness since like I was little, um, it's like a big deal in my family. Like we are super competitive with it, um, like making brackets and everything. Like this year's a little different cause like I'm actually here now. Um, but no, it's just like, it's so surreal to actually finally be a part of it just because you watch it on TV for so long and you watch games like all day long. Um, but to actually be playing in a March Madness game is super cool. We'll go fourth row on the right. Natalie Heverin with the next. Um, to address the elephant in the room, can you just talk about the shirts you're wearing? Um, <laughs> like, who designed those? Did you get to pick the picture on the shirt you're wearing? Um, just tell me as much as you can about those shirts. Yeah, so my shirt, we were headed up to a Big East media day, and my man needed a nap, so he <laughs> just <laughs> kind of took a snooze, and I took a flick, so we all picked them. Um, Ash, you can go ahead and explain yours. Um, I think this shirt sums up Coach's relationship with me. This is what he looks like most of the time <laughs> um, on the court. Um, but when he yells at me, I'm just starting to translate it into I love you instead of you suck. Um, but so when he goes, you suck, I'm just like, oh, love you too. You need a new translator. <laughs> Any other questions? We're going to go to Zoom. We have a question from Brad on Zoom. Brad, go ahead. Maybe not. Sorry, Brad. Brad, you there? Yes, ladies. How are you? And congratulations on the uh, win. That offensive spark in the first quarter when you went on the 17 to 0 run. After that, what was your mindset and how that would play out for the rest of the game? I think after that run, we just wanted to continue to keep our foot on the gas, don't let up. Um, we also know basketball is a game of runs, so staying like present in that we want to continue to keep going on this run and not let Jackson State go on a run, um, but we know that Every single game during this time, everybody's playing for their lives, so nobody's going to give up. Nobody's going to just ease off the throttle. So just continue to play our game um, and continue to do what got us on that run um, and just staying focused and staying in the moment. We have time for one more here. No more questions, ladies. Thank you very much. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Coach? Up front. 
you know, you talked a little bit about it in your opening statement, but to have this team get off on that kind of a run and then to have Ashlyn get her start the way the way she did, how important was it for you guys to to make a statement early in this one and just to get the confidence of this team up early? Yeah, <coughs> if um, if you remember the, um, wasn't that long ago, obviously the Providence game, like the first game of the Big East tournament, it's, it, it, it takes a little bit of time to get your, get yourself acclimated into the game. And sometimes the, the other team um, is, is going gonna, is gonna to react to whatever's going on. So if you're struggling and they get a little bit confident and they feel really good about how they can attack you and how they can guard you, um, it, has a, it has a way of impacting the game. But when you start off the way we did um, and Paige, when, <coughs> when she starts off like that, it makes everybody feel a lot more confident they can breathe a little bit easier, uh, knowing that um, she's pretty much taken control of the game. And and Aaliyah, you know, we, uh, we weren't sure like how she's going to react with the mask back on, um, and whether or not she's going to be able to, to feel comfortable with all the contact that was going to happen. And when I saw, you know, how how physical she was rebounding the ball and, and outside of her area. Uh, that's when I knew we were okay. Paige was being aggressive. Aaliyah was being, you know, assertive. And um, I thought we're going to be okay because those two things are, are, are kind of what drives us. And, and we always need one more player to step up. And if it's a couple players, then it's obviously a big, big, big win for us. But, you know, Ash, this is what she does. She, she scores points. And she's comfortable doing it. And I was really worried because, you know, her and KK, you know, they, um, <coughs> I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves to be really, really good. And I was hoping that it, it wouldn't backfire on them, but, you know, that was huge, you know, the two of them playing like that. Question for Coach, Emily, second row. You know, I mean, with Paige, just seeing her back on the floor in the tournament, did you expect her to kind of make the statement that she did today with her first postseason double-double, all of that, and just kind of what was it like to, to see her back in form? Um, I pulled her aside yesterday. We talked a little bit, and um, I said, um, I need to talk to you. said, what do you think I'm going to talk to you about? She said um, that I have to take over the tournament, that I have to do what I did in the Big East tournament, and I have to make sure that I'm everything that my team needs me to be. So she kind of said it for me, you know, and, and that's when I knew that um, – it means it, it means a lot to her because being in a, being in the tournament, coming off an injury, and then being in a tournament, missing a whole year, those are her last two tournament experiences, and I know that this was a big big deal for her because you know she's a forgotten she's a forgotten entity in the country, you know, and I think. Maybe she reminded everybody that she's still pretty good. And, you know, the, the, the thing that needs to be said, too, is um, playing a team like Jackson State, they, they compete really, 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 really hard. And they seem to get energized even more. The more you score, the more they want to keep playing. And they never feel like we're out of it and we should just pack it in. And I was really impressed with them. I think they're exceptionally well coached and, and they're big kids. You know, we didn't know, like, okay, well, you know, maybe she'll 
I told her I asked for a game too. Yeah, she played fantastic. She had a great game. Yeah, they were good. And we had the football. And we had the shooter great. We don't shoot a great. Okay, that's your scoop going into Monday. If we don't shoot a great, we're gonna have a hard time winning. We'll go to Vicky, front row on the left. Do you know, um, for Ashland to have that good of a game in her first NCAA tournament game, that and then like the way she was in here, like this is the most confident that she's been all year. Maybe is that a really great game for her? Yeah, yeah, her confidence is uh, is back. She lost it for a while, but it's um, it's come back. Um, and and I, I've always said uh, when you're a really good player, when you're a really good shooter, you you have to be more like Paige. You have to be slightly delusional and think that you'll never miss a shot. And if you do miss it, it's the gods are conspiring against you. It's not your fault. And you shouldn't ever get down on it. And um, and maybe some of that's wearing off on, on Ash. But um, she certainly didn't play like a freshman today. And she actually played better today than she has at any practice this, this week leading up to the game. So figure that one out. Question for Coach. Wilton Jackson, HBCU Game Day coach. Um, you talked about in this press conference about you, the need for you guys to make shots. And so after you, you get a win like this, uh, what was your message to, to Coach Reed after the game, especially with the way that women's college basketball is changing and the parity that's you know forming in between different programs? Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to commend her on her season. You know, going undefeated in your league. I don't care what league you play in. I don't care who you play against. You play, you know, 18 conference games and you win them all and you win your conference tournament. Um, that's a hell of a job. And it's not like the first time, right? I mean, she's been doing this for quite some time now there. And a lot of these coaches that work like that and have tremendous success and put together, put together great teams and have put together a terrific program, nobody knows about them. They certainly don't get on TV enough, and they certainly don't get enough recognition. Um, and I wanted to let her know that, and that I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to put myself out there and s for her. And I think we need coaches like her um, to be celebrated, and um, bigger schools need to not keep recycling coaches that are let go by other power five schools, whatever you want to call them, that they should start looking outside the box a little bit because there's a lot of great coaches out there, and she's one of them. We have time for two more. We'll go to Zoom. Rob Knox, what's your question? Hey, Coach, how you doing? Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, in, 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 line, in, in line with that question, I'm going to ask you the same thing. But one of the things, I, I, I'll, I'll write for the next, and I'll cover the MIAC and SWAC um, this year. And one of the things, obviously, you've played your share of uh, MIAC and SWAC schools over the years. And lately, um, the, those programs have started to rise, as you mentioned. Uh, but there's always still that, that lack of respect um, for those conferences and their schedules and different things. In your opinion, what can be done to maybe help elevate elevate um, them getting gaining respect more for maybe the committee with, with, with in regards to seating and or just um, opportunities. Um. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, I, I, I do think they suffer from the same thing that a lot of mid-major schools suffer, getting people that are, that are at, a, at, a, at a high level, getting them to want to play you. It's really, really hard to put, a, put together a schedule when you're in their situation. Because everybody just wants you to come to their place and they'll pay you some money to come there, but they'll never come to your place and play. <laughs> and that's really difficult to, to get your net, whatever the hell they're using today, 
to get yourself to that point. And then the teams in your league are suffering the same situation that you're in. So they always play on the road against the best teams, probably lose. And then the reputation is, well, they're good in their league, but they don't compete nationally. And yet I think, you know, Jackson State and some of the other programs have proven that they can go on the road and compete. Maybe not win, but they certainly can compete. And I think getting a 14 seed, when I remember when we were a number one seed, a lot of times we played schools from that, from, from that league as a 16. So I think being a 14, maybe there is some understanding of, hey, these guys deserve it a little more than a team that, you know, won't go out there and play anybody or a team that finishes with a losing record in their own conference, you know, um, that gets a six seed or a seven seed. You know, so people get rewarded for being in the right conference. Just by being born a certain way, they get rewarded. And teams that are trying to really, really work really hard to build this competitive schedule don't get enough rewards. And, um, and maybe this is the start of it, 14. It's not great, but I wonder who, I wonder how they would have done if they didn't have to play us here in front of this environment against the kind of team that we have right now. Maybe next year we'll find out. Time for one more. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you all. Oh. format will be opening statement from coach and we'll move on to questions for the student athletes oh they they throw a curveball at me coach <laughs> give me a second <laughs> sorry about that Let you make an opening statement. Um, great game, great game. I thought uh, with UConn, they did a great job. Uh, really proud of our players who who done a really good job coming in. I thought we had a really good game plan, but we let the first quarter kind of get out of hand. Um, you know, being in this environment, tough environment. Obviously, having the uh, UConn having the, the on court home court advantage, and I thought our players had jitters in that first quarter trying to get after it. But overall, I asked the players to contest every shot. I asked them to slow the ball down from being rotated side to side. Um, we were, the game plan was to run multiple defenses at UConn and just kind of mix them up a little bit. Um, 
we really wanted a different outcome, wanted our players to be more competitive. But overall, I thought that, you know, we did a great job, and I'm just really proud to be able to continue to play in the first round um, against a really good UConn. Questions for the student athletes? Up front, Pat. Uh, for for both of you, can you just talk about that that first quarter and they went on a 17-0 run and you guys were kind of never able really to recover fr from that. What were they doing that was it doing anything that surprised you? Was Paige better than you thought? I mean, obviously you knew she was going to be good, but was w were they better than you thought they were going to be, or what happened there in the first quarter? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it was all on us. Uh, we like Coach Reed said, we did come out with some jitters. Um, we expected um, UConn to play that way, so it was mainly just how we played, how we were, how we came out for the first half. It just wasn't Jackson State basketball, but I'm glad we did pick it up at the end. Um, I would say that the first quarter, the first quarter jitters were definitely on us. They just took advantage and made the shots. Um, if we would have defended better and locked in more, then I think it would have been a better outcome. Questions for the student athletes? Right here on the right. The next, um, can you two just talk about um, the support from your fans and the pep band um, who traveled, you know, halfway across the country to come and support you um, in a, a room full of a lot of UConn fans? Um, I love my HBCU. I love my fans. I love the band. That was really sweet of them. We were excited when we loaded up. And it made us feel at home that we had to bring some home to Connecticut. So. Uh, it was amazing seeing our fans in the stands. Um, just knowing that they came out here to support us means so much to us. Uh, we feed off of their energy. They feed off of our energy. So um, I want to just give a shout out to everybody that came out. Um, and we love, we love our, the boom. We love the boom. Right here on the left on the aisle. She Loves Lou podcast, Tamona. I wanted to ask this question to Ms. Bowler. You played a light game. You had 25 points. Um, can you talk a little bit about your game adjustments from the first half to the second half where you picked it up? Um, I would say that I was just being relentless because at one point I wasn't even looking at the score. I was just like chipping away, trying to get – you know, back into the game, like I didn't like see a person in front of me at a point. Like I just saw Ram, so I was like, okay. In the first quarter, I kind of was a little jittery. I admit that, but I kind of let it go. Like second, the second media timeout. That's when I knew, like, oh, I'm in this moment. I'm just as good as them. So that's when I started playing like it. Question here on the right. My question is for Angel. Angel, so I uh, ex-coach R.E.M. about your um, play. He mentioned you in terms of, of how you were able to help the team today. Um, what do you take away from this experience? Um, it was a great experience just playing on um, this stage. This is my first March Madness, so uh, it felt amazing. Uh, I want to say thank you to Coach uh, Gino. It, it, it really was a, the best time I could have, so I, I'm glad I did get to play on this stage and show off on my team. And you know, although we did come up short, I'm glad of how we performed. Second row on the right, right here. Um, Angel, I saw a, a look of pride on your face um, when your teammates started talking about herself. Can you just talk about her performance um, and how excited you were to see her accomplish that? Um, you guys don't know this is my bestie. Um, I'm so <laughs> proud of her. Uh, I met Tilly last year. She's been outstanding, phenomenal for us. Um, she always knows how to get get the ball in, but she knows how to create her shots. So I just love the way she played and glad that she did come out because that's what got us going today. She played so hard, and we had to follow behind her, and we stepped it up with her. We'll go up front to Pat. For both of you, uh, social media blew up just a little bit. Uh, I know you gave up two points on the play, but can you guys talk about Maya's athleticism and getting up there and getting a goal ten call in, in the women's game and just what you guys showed in terms of <laughs> athleticism and what you can do out there? 
She does that every practice. She do that every practice, literally. Like no matter if she the only one running, she gonna she's gonna be determined to get that ball and tap it. She do it every day. So I was really shocked that she did it. Like I, it, it was like I was shocked, but I wasn't because she did it every day. If you go like into our game, our sweat game, she does it every time she goes on the fast break. Every time. Uh, she just have a relentless effort. She's going to chase down them balls every time. So I know once that ball go up, Maya Crump is going to be at the rim. She's going to meet you at the rim. She's she's fearful. She's an amazing player. Yeah, she's not afraid to jump with anybody. No. Like, nobody. She's not, not afraid. Even me. She's not afraid. <laughs> she's going to She's going to jump with you. She don't matter how tall you are. She's going to jump with you. Question here on the left. Question for Angel Jackson. You know, being the defensive player of the year in the SWAC, can you talk a little bit about um, the defense that you displayed today, the blocks and um, blocking people out and going against um, Aaliyah Edwards, how you prepared yourself, whether it was watching film? Um, yeah, I did prepare myself by watching film, just not really coming in thinking that, oh, they're going to give it to me. It just um, make sure I check off all my assignments. My defense was a little slow at first today, but I feel like I did pick it up uh, as the game came on, went on. So uh, it was just, it was a great matchup. Uh, I did have to, you know, struggle with some fouls uh, a little early, but I feel like second half was a better defensive half. We'll take a question from Zoom. Rob, go ahead. Hey ladies, uh, this is Rob Knox from the Next. Uh, obviously, great season uh, and uh, for, for you all. Congrats on everything you all accomplished. Uh, what will you What will you both remember most about this year? Maybe not just from a basketball standpoint. Obviously, you all done a lot of winning, and that's been you know documented and, and so much. But what is something you're going to remember most about this season that maybe we don't know? That something behind the scenes, something um, unique to Jackson State. Um, I say I remember our boot camp in preseason. Um, that's the hardest time of our lives. Uh, we have to really get after it for a week straight, waking up 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we were rolling in dirt. We were in mud. We, it was like a real Army boot camp. So I would say that made us stronger, and it, made us, it prepared us for this moment because we knew not to back down. We knew that we had to fight for what we wanted, and we had to just stay level-headed the whole game, the whole season. And I'll never take that away from my experience here at Jackson State. Um, I would say boot camp as well because boot camp for Jackson State is an understatement. It's really an understatement. Like the getting up early every day and then class, and then you got to go to treatment, and then you got to find food in your body. Like that's like a that's a mental process. So I carried that on. The team carried that on, and we knew that. We knew that like there was no stopping us after that because the boot camp, it was tough. It was real tough, <laughs> but it was fun though. It was fun though because it's like teamwork. Like you know, like we was picking each other up, rolling through the mud, flipping tires, we was racing. So, yeah. We have time for one more for the student athletes. All right, ladies, thank you very much. And thank you. Questions for Coach. We'll go right up front to Pat. Coach, obviously you'll get to see and read the comments later, but Coach Oriema went on for at length about you and your program and your league and um, the respect that you guys deserve, um, especially after what you did this, this season. So can you talk a little bit about representing your league and what you think your, your team did this season? You know, um, I really appreciate um, – Coach, for those w wonderful words that he said, I, I get a chance to read it or see it later. Um, but for me at Jackson State, you know, um, I not only wanted to put our university on the map, I wanted to put HBCUs on the map. We have such a special community that a lot of people overlook. We have a community that's not built on wins and losses, but built on family and love. And, you know, that's, I just want to be a great representation for that. Um, when I came to Jackson State, I wanted to build a team that could be dominant in our conference, but also a team that could be competitive in, outside of the conference versus Power Five institutions. And so 
I'm an advocate for HBCUs. I'm an advocate for our representation, our proper representation. And, um, you know, I, I, I commend our coaches when they do a good job, when they win big games, because when they do well, it makes the entire um, conference look good. It makes all HBCUs look good when they do good, a good job. Grambling did a good job in beating a Power Five. Southern did a great job in beating a top Power Five. You know, um, uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff did a great job in beating the Power Five. We had some really good basketball, and and that's what that's what it's all about. And you know, we want the the, the best representation to come to the NCAA tournament, so that we can bring an awareness to what we do, and awareness to who we are, and awareness to our community, um, and continue to hope that we can continue to grow um, the greatness within it. Questions. Natalie Hubbard with the next. Um, can you just talk about um, either a moment you're most proud of of your team this season or the growth that you've seen um, over the course of the season? Um, you know, I'm really proud of our players for being determined to go back out and be successful this year. Um, we were on a 43 win streak uh, last year when we got our first loss, and our players took that to heart. Um, we also lost in the tournament last year, and our players didn't take that too well. This team coming in this year, were extremely tough, mentally tough, and they were resilient. Um, going 21 and 0 was not easy by any measure. If it was easy, it doesn't matter the level. If it was easy, it would be done more across the country. And so I'm just really proud of our players for being able to be resilient through tough times. You know, people see the record, but they don't know what, we, what we've gone through to get to, to where we, we are and to get to where what we was able to do this year. And so this is a really special team. You know, we had to lock, in, lock out a lot of noise. We had to lock in and be focused on our vision. Um, we had several distractions this year, but this team stayed the course. Um, and, and, you know, hats off to my staff as well. We, we don't have a good team. We don't have a solid team. We don't have a mentally tough team without a great staff and a great athletic director and great administrators. So I'm just really proud of um, the team for um, being able to play with a target on our back. You know, every game we played was a championship game. You know, when teams made, they made their runs, you know, the fans cheered like it was a championship game. And we had to push through that. And so I'm just really proud of our players and the effort that they gave this year. Really special team. We'll go back to Zoom. Rob, what's your question? Hey, Coach. Um, it's Rob again. Uh, again, obviously, um, phenomenal job with everything this year. Uh, my question to you is uh, kind of along the lines of, of how, how you open to how you open here with just the, the respect. Uh, obviously, uh, Coach Vickers at Norfolk State, uh, you know, last year, Don Stelly walked into his locker room last year and, you know, said, hey, you guys should have been a 16 seed. Tara Vanderveer had some good things, to, great things to say about Norfolk State last night and obviously Gino today. Um, you know, as coaches, and especially at, at this level, um, how how important how important is it when coaches like that of that stature are, are using their platform to to support uh, the work that you're doing and, and and making sure that it's also amplified beyond just the media? You know it's really important, and I'm extremely thankful that uh, coaches are recognizing what we are able to do at this level. Um, a lot of times it's not taken serious. A lot of time it's overlooked. But what we do, we're doing the same thing with less. You know, we, we had, we're getting our players prepared to play at this, this, this level um, with a lot less than what these bigger schools have. And to have these coaches could call that moment out is a really good feeling. You know, I'm extremely thankful for what the NCAA has done in terms of the rules that have been changed for our game to be more competitive um, and for our game collectively to be more respected. Um, our numbers grew last year in the NCAA tournament because our players brought a lot of excitement to the floor. Women's basketball is what I'm talking about. A lot of excitement to the floor. The game is growing. We have pioneers like Coach Staley, Coach Gino, um, and you know, giving these these great words to about our coaches. But the game does not grow if the if all Division One levels doesn't grow. If the HBC, if the, the lower levels don't grow, the game doesn't grow. And so we need coaches to can continue to talk great things about us. We need to continue to build this level so that the game of basketball, women's basketball, can continue to grow. 
I would love to see this tournament go to a neutral site like men's basketball. We'll have a better chance. You know, teams coming in at the 16 seed, teams coming in at 15 and 14, I have a better chance to compete and, and not have those jitters, to be on an even playing field. So I would love to see the game continue to grow to that. But overall, it's all about growing the game of women's basketball. And, I, and having those big-time coaches talk about us is, is phenomenal. It's outstanding and much appreciated. Question here on the right. Coach, my question kind of goes along with uh, the comments you just made. Um, have you had the chance, I know you didn't get the outcome you wanted today, but have you had the chance to think about what you truly brought to the game of women's college basketball and where it's going? Um, you know, I, I, I haven't really had a chance to really do that type of evaluation. Um, but I do know that, you know, I'm really proud that Jackson State University has made national attention. I'm really proud of the respect that people have for our program. Um, I'm thankful, you know, um, and I just think collectively we are growing. You know, you have, you know, um, the NCAA has put so many HBCU coaches and athletic directors and on the um, NCAA committees. That's huge. You know, um, I've been selected to be on the committee. Our voices are being heard. You know, that's big. And so um, I'm just extremely proud to be a vessel. That's all I want to do is to be a vessel and continue to grow the game. And I'm just really thankful for the space that has been provided, the good Lord has provided for us, and we want to continue to grow the game. Question here on the left. Simona Stapleton, She Loves Deep Podcast. Coach, you've had an amazing season. You're undefeated in the SWAC, and your motto is knock down walls. Do you feel like um, your season, um, you're out of conference where you were playing uh, some of the bigger schools, you had a net ranking of 100. Do you feel like you are getting closer and closer uh, to knocking down those walls, not just for Jackson State, but those HBCUs that you were previously speaking of? The, the ending of your statement is, is really important to me. The fight that I like to have for our um, university and for our conference and for the HBCU community is ongoing. You know, if we're not knocking down walls, the walls ha are being knocked down in other areas. Um, and by other schools in the HBCU sports. And so I'm extremely thankful for that. You know, people have come together and, and just respect. You know, it's, that's all. We, we, want this, we want the same opportunity that everybody else has. And um, we, have, we have made a lot of noise in that area. And for us, I think we've taken steps forward, we've gone back. That's the game of basketball. You know, that, that happens. Um, you know, in regards to being undefeated in the conference, very proud of that. But I don't coach to win the swag. I coach to win out of the conference. I coach to win the NCAA tournament. I coach to win preseason games against big schools. I coach to be in a top 25 AP poll. You know, why not? Why not Jackson State? So that's why I coach. And you have a lot of coaches who are now saying, it does not matter where I am. This is what I want to accomplish. And that, to me, is knocking down walls. Coach, thank you so much, and congrats on a great season. Thank you.